721, Big 550, KTRS. Uh, everyone knows that American Sniper was the number one movie in the country. And uh, I don't think I'm telling any tales here, but we know that the lead uh, actor, the lead character, Chris Kyle, uh, passed away after coming back from his uh, tours of duty. And following that story is Jim Ryan, ABC News correspondent. This trial, Jim, breaks your heart. It really does. You know, you've got family members in there, Chris Kyle's widow who's sitting there, the parents of Chad Littlefield, the other murder victim here, also in the courtroom. Uh, you're right. It's it's a difficult um, a difficult trial, I think, for those people to hear. And uh, undoubtedly, uh, at least interesting and perhaps heartbreaking for the jurors as well. Yes. They watched yesterday, McGraw, as a long videotape was played. It was the tape of the interview, if you will, interrogation, if you'd like, uh, that uh, was conducted just a few hours after the killings happened. And in that, Eddie Routh essentially confesses to what he had done also expresses some remorse about it as well, McGraw. Yeah, take us back. So it wasn't his mother asked Chris Kyle to say, hey, please help my son. He's suffering from PTSD. And, and that's how they ended up there at that shooting range? Exactly. And in fact, uh, yesterday, earlier in the day, we uh, saw, uh, you know, called into evidence, some of the text messages and phone messages that were exchanged back and forth between Chris Kyle and the mother of Eddie Routh, and then eventually Chris Kyle and Eddie Routh himself. Uh, that, uh, yes, contact had been made. This request came that uh, Eddie Routh had come back from his time in the Marine Corps and had some deep emotional problems. His mother knew that Chris Kyle, this uh, decorated Navy SEAL, had uh, been helping vets with their problems, their emotional problems when they came back from their tours of duty and reached out to him. Chris Kyle agreed that he would uh, meet with him, talk with him, do something recreational with him. Turns out that that was going down to a shooting range here in Erath County, Texas, McGraw. So I can only imagine what was the atmosphere and the mood like in the, uh, uh, the courtroom as they played that video? Dead silence other than the sound coming from that TV set and uh, those monitors uh, around the courtroom. Uh, the drawers leaning forward, some of them taking notes, listening intently to occasionally garbled uh, statements from Eddie Routh. But, uh, the, you know, it, it was very clear that uh, he was saying that he did commit these two shootings, these, these killings. Even went so far as to say that Chad Littlefield was shot first, Chris Kyle was shot second. He also uh, quite plainly said that he knew, he answered several times, three or four times at least, did you know what you uh, had done was wrong? He says yes, sir, to that Texas Ranger every time. Yeah, so he's not denying that he did it, but their defense is uh, insanity, correct? Yes, exactly. And and that was, that's why it was so important that during, uh, during that interrogation that uh, several times, again and again, he said that he knew what he had done was wrong. The defense, in showing that he was insane at the time, needs to prove that uh, he didn't know right from wrong and that he therefore can't be held responsible, but there he was on tape saying that, uh, yes, he understood it. I think the defense, what they'll do now, uh, McGraw, once they take over the case, that may be today, maybe tomorrow, will be to try to show uh, the, the bizarre statements that uh, Eddie Routh made during that interview uh, and that others, uh, other bizarre statements that he made throughout uh, that day in 2013 to show that he was crazy at the time. It does. It does. Um, I mean, there, it, it depends on which way you want to see, because the reports of that videotape is you say, yes, he knew what he did. I was wrong. But he also talks about how he had to do it to sort of protect himself and his family and his friends. Well, as much as anything else, he said that, uh, he said, uh, uh, you know, they were coming after my soul, so I took their souls first. Uh, he talked about wolves and about uh, bizarre statements about square cities and round cities and wolves in the sky. So he did have some really off-the-wall kinds of comments during this time. Uh, but, uh, again, I think the prosecution will try to focus not on those statements, but on this admission of guilt and, uh, and also the finding that... Uh, that he knew what he was up to. How, how long will this trial continue for? I'd say another week or so. I honestly believe, and, and we haven't seen a witness list, uh, even the clerk has not been provided a witness list, but uh, I suspect that the, uh, if the, the prosecution will rest his case today and that the defense will take over. We'll have uh, the rest of this week, and, and maybe next week it'll be done. Yeah, sad. All right, uh, Jim Ryan, ABC News correspondent, following uh, that American sniper trial down in Texas. Jim, thanks for checking in. Thanks a lot, McGraw. Six, uh, 725 here, Big 550 KTRS. I haven't seen the movie yet. We interviewed Chris Kyle uh, twice, I think, two different times for his, his book when it first came out. Oh, he did? Yeah. Um, I, and I have not seen the movie yet. Mm, um, but the whole thing is just so sad. He, he comes back. I know. And they, he's sort of helping vets. 
to sort. I mean, that's how he's getting over his his issues, and he's helping vets. And the one vet they go to a shooting range to sort of, mm-hmm. you know, sort of work through it. And the one vet turns on the other vet and 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 shoots him. True tragedy. Yeah, tragedy. Really I mean, is. no matter no matter how the trial comes out, um, you know, just. Uh, 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 it's you know it's it's not going to be marked as a casualty of war, but that's exactly what it is, right? There's two another two more casualties of the war um, is being played out in Texas, and you know it doesn't matter what, well what the end story is, but those those two lives um, you know were ruined and destroyed um, because of mm-hmm. you know the the war. There's just no two ways about it. That, and I'm making a statement, or a, not one way or the other. I'm just saying that that you know they're, they're not going to be marked as you know uh, a death on the battlefield, but in some ways they probably should be. Seven twenty-seven here, Big Five Fifty KTRS. Um, traffic, weather, sports next on KTRS.